Thank you. Um, well, for th those who don't know me, I belong to those guys who found the sea dot some time ago. So I'm quite a bit involved in it already. And what I'll give you a talk is a version of some things which I would call not the state of signal, but behind the curtain. And later on, uh, we will have a look at what's doing. When I was talking to people about CETON, I discovered one interesting thing. Everybody knew exactly what they think CETON is doing, what the CETON folks are doing, and everything knew something different. And <laughs> all of them were right. <laughs> so, and I set up to create a talk, and you won't see any slides now. I will use actually this talk's designed for an old fashioned chalkboard. <laughs> but we don't have chalkboards here, so I will simulate the chalkboard with some kind of paper here. And I will try to give you an impression what the C Tan doing team, this OPEC black box thing, is doing in their copious spare time that they try to keep this <laughs> thing running. And the first question is, you are all tech users. Well, we have an abundance of tech of programming developers here as well, which is quite unusual, so not the typical user type. But I think most people don't realize where the normal users have been most contacted with CTOM. It's when they use the update function of MIGTEC and of TechLive. Yes. This is the most, one of the most important things people use if you have somebody who is uh, a <coughs> kind of tech like, as you all know. Mm -hmm. And what they do is, they use this stuff, and they depend on a whole network of servers to provide updates for them, and also to provide the installation for them. So what we have here is a mirror network, we call this, and this mirror network provides packages and distributions. So if somebody, well, we all have a tech life CD maybe, but most people use the net installer. Most people, and I can tell this by hard facts, because I see the download stats. I see how people access the CTON servers. And people access, the most accesses that we have are in the distribution areas, both by traffic and also by amounts. It's something where you have the most contact as a normal user with your tech stuff. Well, these mirrors are something which you can even see in the URL, in the link on your browser, if you have ever seen, so or in a configuration file of MIPTEC, where it sometimes says mirror.ctan.org. This is not one server. These are currently, I think, 150 or 200 servers, which are all fed by the master content. And the master content is, well, so this content in these mirrors has to come from somewhere. And I have to say that we now may um, differentiate between two types of master content. We have the one time master content, which are <laughs> which is the master distribution, which are the ISOs that you can download, or the, or the stuff that is loaded immediately, 
the stuff that you install on your system. And also we have the update packages, the master updates. Those are the packages that are placed on the servers and that are in the update process fetched from the servers and installed on your PCs, on your computers, on your Macs, on your Linux systems. These mirrors don't necessarily go directly to the servers where the stuff is stored. The servers where the stuff is originally stored. Then we arrive at CTON. We are currently a little bit before CTON, but we will, I want to develop it from the end user, from the guy who does with us this documents that fact to the place where we as the CTON team work. We can see the, the road that's going this way. And what we have in between is a poor technical intermediate. Uh, <laughs> I tried to get this thing wholly on black. On so oh yes, that's so. Well, yeah. so, so we have something which is here in between it, and this is called a master mirror. A master mirror is a system where other mirrors mirror from. Nelson provides the master mirror for North Africa. So what Nelson does is he mirrors the content from this distribution and the updates and provides it on a server that is geographically or network-wise closer to some other things that not every bike from every user has to cross the Atlantic or the Pacific or whatever it's there. But it goes from there then in a locally way there. And actually I think we could use another master mirror in Asia, by the way. <laughs> um, but even if you look at these things, these master package, the updates, the package, and the master ISOs, these are not done by yours truly. These are done by the distribution orders. These are done by TechLive, by Nick by MicPage, and so on, and placed by these orders directly on our servers. Actually, we mirror them for them, so, so we have no involvement in this. They place them somewhere, we get them, and we distribute them. But this is often overseen. Distribution of software and distribution of updates is one of the, I would say, two, three major um, services that the CTAN and the Comprehensive Tech Archive Network has to provide for the tech community at large. And so we need somebody in the CTAN community who cares for all this stuff. This black stuff, the mirror stuff. And it is black because nobody sees it. But somehow it gets working, it gets worked out. All of And the guy who does this mostly is called Reiner. <laughs> Reiner Schoff, well known as one of the LaTeX uh, original core team members. Um, and he uh, was very active and had many roles in CTAN um, and has withdrawn in the last two years to a point that he resigned from many of his other, other activities and actively manages the mirrors at this time. This is one of his main um, achievements. So when we are at this point, the question is how do the distributions come to the stuff that is here in the, in the distributions? How do they get there? And here we have two things that to get something into a distribution must be known. The one thing is the actual software itself. Okay, if you don't have software, you can't put it into distribution. That's a banality. But even almost as important is the second thing you need. You need information. You need metadata. What you put in there. You need information about the order. You need information about the licenses. You need information about uh, the short description. People want to type cache doc and want to open up a help screen that does something. So if information when within this um, package, where is the documentation, where, why is the documentation named, are there documentation, is documentation available <coughs> in many languages or just in one language? Right? If yes, which language is it? <coughs> Maybe if documentation is only on a web page somewhere, then a browser should be opened. So we have all kinds of information associated to a package 
And this information must be available to the distributions. Otherwise, you as a user, as an order, can't get your hands on it. Or you would have to look up for every package in you. That you can use text document like this is a matter of having available information about the package. And this information is, in the end, in this software, supplied by two things. The first thing is the, something which we call Cache Catalog. The Cache Catalog originally was started from Graham Williams, Wilson? Williams. 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 Um, and, uh, but nowadays it's a um, tool that's managed and um, also handled purely by the C20. And there is no package on C20 that is not in the Cache Catalog. This is mandatory. So the Cache Catalog is the place where the information about what is this for a package, what is the aim of the goal of this package, what is the short, the excellent summary of it, where is it related from, how does, um, where is the documentation for it, what is the license for it, which is uh, a special place, a uh, special problem in its own. So this is, so to say, the, in the table of contents. This is a table of contents of CETA. And the other thing, of course, you need the package source. We do need some source files. And please see that the package source files are different than the distribution files. These are, so to say, binary. Even if you have tech files where there are no real binary, that a usual order develops in a way that he has both a style file and the, um, and the doc file and uh, some tech files all in one directory and just develops. And the font file equally well. And I am ashamed to say that I'm responsible, one of the guys responsible, that it's not the same on the, um, um, on the final system at yours. Hans had this wonderful presentation, what if? And I have to say, what if I could do some, some one thing I was involved differently? I would not do TDS, the tech infrastructure as it is now. <laughs> 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 and I wrote 50% of it. Mm -hmm. um, it was the best compromise available at this time, but it, nowadays it's one of the reasons why we have to transform source packages into binary package. So binary package is actually maybe may even the same files, maybe um, something, but organized in a different way so they are reliable into the final distribution so they are, you can install them, by unpack them, and they can be run. And this is different from a source distribution. A source distribution is a package which is there for the convenience of the author and not of the user. And these are two different views on the whole thing. It's also the binary <coughs> distribution usually has um, PDF um, documentation, PDF format, which the source not necessarily had, has about it. Um, and somebody has to supply this input for our distributions. Our distributions want them us, from us. Our dis the distributions manage our announcement lists. They, they um, um, supervise our announcement lists. They look up what's happening here. So you need another guy, some guys, and those are the guys who handle this, who create these packages. This is actually, to handle the stuff here, the most um, time-consuming work in the whole C10 team, I have to say. It's um, currently this work is done by two to three people. Um, ladies first. <laughs> Petra, who's here also in her very first tech conference, and I really welcome her for it.
Manfred, who is standing there at the wall. And um, Ina has to, uh, or is about to start or something like this. So, so, she's, so she, she, has she has started, yes? And there's a fourth one who is, who is going to Oh. Eric. And I should put his or her name as well. Eric. Uh, Eric, yes, I remember. We had open the. So, and I have to say, you can't say enough how much these people work for you. I think you need one to two hours a day. One hour a day is, I think, the, uh, the, yeah, in by average, just to do this work. It's not a work where you can go in and say, okay, I do this uh, one hour per month or something like this, or two hours per month or so. I couldn't do it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm a CEO of a company. I have a company to run. But uh, this is something where it really, it's an amazing feat that people stay up and answer. And the work. We are proud this now. We, we need this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what they are doing is I would like to compare to a librarian work. You don't need to be the best tech programmer to do this. It's just like you don't need to be a good uh, author, a good literature, a good performer to, to, to catalog this. As the name tech catalog says and package does. What they do is they play a kind of gatekeeper. <coughs> the gatekeeper of a, the task of a librarian in a library is to get a new submission in, look at the submission, see where does it fit into, adds the, the summary to it, Add some keywords to it, where you can find it, and so that you can look it up somewhere, and puts it in the shelf at some place where somebody who wants to get it out finds it. And this is actually the thing that the upload management in CTAM is doing. They get the stuff from the from the developers. They look at it, see, okay, this is a format that's good. Maybe they work with the authors together to adapt the. Um, Submission to the needs of the distributions. If you, as an order, were a demon, were somebody who says, This, no, this C10 books, why do they uh, um, why do they pick on me to get all the stuff right? <laughs> well, they do this because the distributions need it. They all the, the end users need it in the end. What they are doing, what they are demanding from, from those part of your developers is to supply your stuff in a way that distributions can use and can redistribute it. It's not, this is not, these demands are not made because they are out of thin air. It's because tech life says you can't di um, distribute it otherwise. And that's the reason for these routes and controls that we have set up. So, I have to ask, is this Below visible? I don't think so. Uh, but I continue here. Yeah. Because when these upload managers want to create the packages and the sources, I just said upload management. So there must be an upload component somewhere. And the upload component. is nowadays a web form that says the upload comment is somebody where you have a, a form on a website, and we will see the website soon after, that's the reason why I said I need the beamer. Um, and this, um, this form is somebody where somebody can attach the submission into and add the additional um, information that's needed there? I don't think for updates it's not needed to add everything. Wasn't it the first day? No, it's not everything. Yeah. And so you have a more structured submission. So, and I talked about the website. And I don't have screen that's working. Let's have a look. 
But we also have seen, uh, we have just told you, the upload is part of a website. And this website is actually And this website is there to, well, what is the reason? For it? You have to say, the website is something which is quite popular. Um, the reasons that the website is used is for everybody different. Everybody sees different parts of the website as important. For, as I said, the reals realist realistically, in a realistic way, the upload form is for most users important because it gets the stuff that they use without C-time accessing at all. So it's more the developer side of looking at the thing. We also have people who want to just browse the packages or who are looking for a special package or are looking for some information about a package. So we have something which I would call browsing and searching. And now we have again somebody who manages this thing. Somebody has to care for the website. And here's that mobile that we all screw it. <laughs> Browsing and searching is something um, which is done, but quite frankly, in my opinion, I don't know if I'm biased here, but in my opinion, that's mostly done by expert users. The, the most users who are just looking for something are going to a tech exchange and asking there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's my opinion. Uh, I, I think it's a very valuable thing, but it's more for the kind of people who go to high tech conferences. So, <laughs> and for that, it's a, a very valuable um, uh, link to have. We have, and we also are able to download the sources. And if I'm looking at the stats, this is the least used part of whole CTAN. So, it, to get you an impression, this means roughly two terabyte per month. We distribute from our master node to the mirror nodes two terabytes per month just going out. So tech is alive and kicking if you have this kind of bandwidth with the requirement. What we also have is that the browsing and searching is quite well visited. Much less for the download area. Well, and this is because the amount of people who are developers, of course, not, not less so. So what we see here are three main areas that the CTAN team tries or delivers services for you as users. The first, just a moment, the first one is the mirroring, the ability to bring software in the end user format to you as the users. The second one is the Upload management, the librarian act of cataloging and putting things in places that the distributions can use it in a form that distributions can use it. And the third category is the public interface, the website that's going on. There's actually a fourth category that's called system administration work, and that's my part, <laughs> which I left off here. And I would, um, if Boris wants to say something immediately here, so otherwise I would like to, to use the rest of three or four I, minutes to show some things I, from I the website. I have a question, very yeah. simple. You say two terabytes per month. This is traffic from mirror, from master to mirrors. No, well, this is an overall traffic for, goes from master to mirrors and from tech users who access it directly. But it's, yeah. the, it's, the, it's the, from our distribution areas. Yeah. What I'm saying is that the traffic from mirrors to users is not in two terabytes. It's probably somewhere like 20 terabytes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, because most of users uh, access 
Mirrors, not you, yeah. so real traffic is probably... Uh, now we have any, any stats, what's going on in the Fiat Lava? Yeah, they're, they're online, I don't remember exact numbers, but it's hundreds of gigabytes a day. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, have, we have, so we, um, Hans said, we are a niche community, or if we have a niche product. I fully agree with him. It's actually something, um, if you look at those uh, links to the top and photos, but we have a quite large niche. <laughs> <laughs> and we should keep it this way. So, these, if you, but the full picture has some even more boxes, which I will skip now. Um, the problem here is, if you put up this, then people will talk to you, only about the green part of the things and want to improve something here. Or only about the uh, blue part and wants to change something here. Or only about the black part and want to change something here. I would just want to mention, if you um, get one part and tries to move in a direction, the other parts are connected. You can do this, but you must always be careful and pay attention to the connection to the other parts. You can't uh, change the yellow part, the green part, without changing the blue part. You can't change the diffusion network without changing also the blue part. You can't change the way the upper arrangement works without changing upward forms and the, and the consumer distributions. So you have to take into equation those parts of silicon <laughs> which are not necessarily seen in the immediately, but which are interconnected and must work together. And that's the reason why I wanted to add a kind of picture like this one. So, um, now I would like to take the opportunity. Hmm. Why is this not full screen? Okay, give me one try to make this full screen and then I will give up. Give up. Genau. <laughs> this is full screen. Well, actually get should um, step in if I'm telling the wrong thing because he programmed the uh, stuff. It's quite. It's actually quite new. When did you start um, getting out the new version? I think it was two years ago. 2011, I started developing. Ah, yeah. 2012, it, it's, uh, it was published first time. Uh, so it's uh, three years old. And we have these things, you know, uh, the stuff that's, that's usual now. So if you look at, if you have it on a, on a smartphone, which I can simulate here, then suddenly a menu appears instead of things. It's called responsive web design. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know what the effort is. Um, my company does this stuff as well, so it's quite fine. And uh, so it adapts to the uh, form function of the, um, the layout adapts to the form function of the, of the device. And... Um, in, within the scene, you have the, quite at the front the stuff that we just talked about, searching and browsing, because these are the two main usages of CTAR website. The upper form, form just follows below, because this is necessary. So those, for the end users, is up top. It's an interesting question, what should be added to the um, and what things I know that he has lots of ideas <laughs> what could be done he was um, experimenting with semantic nets and having um, computationally computed relationships between packages and seeing how to get some things done so I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, how this uh, will um, spell out and we also have some point us to new things, but in the end it boils down, we want to have an, to, and to be able to access this. We have full text, search engine behind it, so if you type something in the search field, there's not only search for files, but also search for in the description, and also in the readme's, and also in the 
uh, the stuff uh, is an extended search engine or extended search possibility over here where you have where you can <coughs> restrict your search on certain items on certain categories so you can say okay I want to see only uh, packages that are from essence I think I think sting okay I'm still in there. <laughs> <laughs> so and from here then you can follow this and so on. So you have a certain amount. And this I wanted to show this because um, many people haven't looked at the C time website for ages. Because they all have this old style website in their mind and says, okay, this was not um, a thing which I use anyhow. Take a look at it now, again, it has changed. And it's changing every half year or so. Well, it's not changing every month or so. We're doing this, as I said, in our spare time. We're not good time employees or something. But it's changing, it's new um, features gaining. And so you are invited to have a look at it. And I hope with my structure, with my diagram, I gave you an insight what the CTAM team is doing. Thank you.
then you support both. And you can slowly, the next 10 years, make a position. Yeah. Well, it's, I would be in favor of it, but it's more a um, topic we would have to talk about between um, distributions. Uh, currently, we have two big ones, which means the Mikitech and the Mikitech people have to talk about it. And I would be fully in favor of it. As I said, I was responsible for this part, and I was responsible uh, for uh, um, promoting the compromise of the TDS nowadays, because at this time, the EM tech, I don't really remember EM tech, was very important at this time, was one of the most important, played the role that MIGTEC is playing nowadays. And um, we couldn't let EM tech out in the, in the blue. So we had to make something that in correctly. But the reasons are done. I completely agree with you. Michael? Yeah, so I actually have sort of two questions at the opposite end of the telescope. Um, the first one is concerns the master regimes that you have, the, the big ones around the world. Um, in, in the current status of things, do you feel you have the right number, or you need more, or you know, just sort of generally how you feel about that? The other, that's question number one. Question number two, the other end of the telescope. For probably a decade and a half, I've been mirroring a personal copy of CPAN on my machine, and I can use locate and you know, all these neat things too. Uh, and everything is right there. Am I being a good good guy or a bad guy? <laughs> uh, From well, your perspective, of answer. No, uh, but let me answer the first question um, first because this is a question has been posed often to us, especially with the Dennis of Robin's system, um, the Cambridge node. Um, we have to see, and this comes back to this um, things here, that we have different roads into our, I call them master servers. Um, in the end, um, we Originally, we had two servers where upload could take place. This was a kind of redundancy um, topic as well. But the problem was that you never knew how, who handled which update, or was it handled properly, what, ha what happens on vacations, or if somebody is going to be ill. This was not, very, not, well, not, not a good pro um, process. Um, we had, we, it had the advantage of being robust. So if one system broke down, let the other system they could continue. I think in the age of computer system of, I, of IT nowadays, this is not necessary anymore. You see, the master CTAN node is a virtual machine. Yeah, and if we have, if we, if if we, the relation to our hosting provider would break down, I would simply spin up the, sim, the virtual machine on another system. I would simply move it somewhere and spin it up there. I would go to a different provider. We have measurement taking place to be able to do this. So we have copies of our virtual machine outside of our hosting provider to be able to just go to someone different and within two days there's a new seat and master node. And to have one system where you log in per SSH to do upload management, it doesn't matter where it is on the world anymore. It may be in, in Houston, it may be in Salt Lake City, it may be in, in Cologne, where it is at the moment. This doesn't matter anymore. A uh, different thing is the distribution network. The distribution network, which has this kind of um, um, massive data amounts going around, where people have performance issues, they have latency, they have bandwidth they need to consider from. There we can need more systems. And we could also need a better stage, a better hierarchical structure in this cell. The hierarchical structure means, as I said, we have some kind of intermediate mirrors that others are mirroring from, like Nelson introduced in North America now. And um, so, the, so I would like to separate between those stuff where people are working, there is a one node who is resilient against those technical and legal problems is the solution. And we have now the technology to provide this resilience, which we had 10 years ago. 10 years ago, it was all hardware. You had to, if you had the hardware, hardware in some computing system, from <coughs> computing data center, and the data center had to move it out. That's not the case now, my case anymore. Um, the other thing is this distribution network. I think there we could need more and we would need also more coordination. To say we have, as I said, one in Asia, maybe one in down under, um, where people mirror from, from that or so. This is something where we 
are working toward it, but we aren't there yet. I think that's it. No. And you can mirror it as long as you want, as long as you use R string, please. Don't mirror by something else. So those of you mirroring the personal copy, use R string, please. Is, is it yeah. worth publishing the hierarchy tree so that, that if you see a problem somewhere uh, in several places, you will know at least where to, uh, you know, where the source is? We that? have automated, uh, this is something which was done in the last year, we have automated mirror monitoring. So we know where the problems are. Well, yeah. oh. Do you have it somewhere? Yeah. I, oh yeah, mirrors. Yeah, mirror mine. Right so side, is it, is right side, down below, the bit down. Mirroring the mirrors here. Last one. Monitoring the mirrors, I see. Mirroring the mirrors, yeah. That takes the mirror mine. But then, you know, what you'll see sometimes is Several mirrors. We only have currently three or four of these master mirrors, so that's quite easy. If they are off, uh, then we notice it immediately. Uh, the, we don't have a deep structure. We have uh, at most a two level structure uh, that we have currently. Okay. And uh, what we do is that we monitor. Um, okay, doesn't we monitor certain files that are, have to be on the mirrors, and according to the age of the files, we determine up to dateness of the mirror. And if the files are not there or not up to date, then we say, okay, um, this mirror is discarded or disabled in the automatic build load balancing system that assigns an IP address to mirror.c.org. So, will this tell me that I'm too late? <laughs> I see it myself. <laughs> it's fantastic to hear that C10 is in such great health, and I'm looking forward to uh, all the improvements in the future. Thanks to everyone. Thank